Hello and welcome to part 2 on Born Harbour Cycles. Here we have a Born Harbour Cycle for Magnesium Oxide. And the question says, complete the diagram. Okay, so let's see what we have already. We can see that this is a Born Harbour Cycle for Magnesium Oxide. This arrow shows the atomization of oxygen. Here we have the atomization of magnesium. And here we can see that they've been turned into positive and negative ions which means the first and second ionization of magnesium and the first and second electron affinity of oxygen are yet to be displayed. Okay, so let's start with magnesium. We'll say that this arrow is going to be the first ionization energy of magnesium, which means we're going to make magnesium lose an electron and turn into a positive ion. And we should get something like this. Now remember, magnesium is a plus two, so that means we're going to have to ionize it twice. Here, we have the second ionization energy of magnesium. So now we've created a two plus ion, and of course, two electrons have been removed overall. So far, nothing's happened to the oxygen yet. So now, let's do the first electron affinity of oxygen. This means oxygen will gain an electron and turn into a minus ion. Notice how before there were two electrons, but now there's one, because oxygen has taken one of them. And finally, we're going to do the second electron affinity of oxygen to turn it into a 2 minus ion. And the cycle is complete. Okay, so here's the cycle once again, and these are the missing energy levels that we had to fill in. Okay, so next, they've given us some information regarding the enthalpy changes. And they want us to work out the lattice enthalpy of formation. Alright, so we're going to use the table to put in the enthalpy change with the appropriate arrows. So let's start with this arrow on the left. Enthalpy of formation of magnesium oxide is minus 602. Okay, let's do this arrow now. So we have atomization of oxygen, which is 248. Here we have the atomization of magnesium, which is 150. And we keep on going through the cycle and putting in the values that they've given us from the table to complete the cycle. Finally, we're left with calculate the value for lattice formation. And of course, we haven't been given a value for that because we have to work it out. So now remember, when it comes to using the cycle, the method is the following. Number one, we're going to highlight a line that has two arrows pointing away from it. And that is this line you will see that there's no other line that has two arrows pointing away from it. Next, we're going to highlight another line, but this time it will have two arrows pointing towards it. Again, this is the only one that has that. All right, so now, to go from one red line to another one, we can either go like this, or we could add up all the other numbers and make our way around the cycle. And remember, because of Hess's law, it does not matter which route you take, the energy change should be the same. So that means we can now create an equation that would look like this. Next, we're going to solve for lattice enthalpy. So we're going to add up the numbers on the right, and lattice enthalpy should be minus 3888. Again, notice how it's a negative number, and the arrow is pointing down for lattice enthalpy, meaning that it is exothermic. So that means we've done it correctly. Okay, one more thing. Let's talk about electron affinity for oxygen. So if you look at the first electron affinity, it's an exothermic reaction, minus 142. But then the second one is endothermic. So how is it that the first electron affinity is exothermic, but the second is endothermic? And the reason behind that is because if you look at the second electron affinity, you're combining a negative electron with an oxygen minus ion. Both are negative, so they will both repel each other, meaning that it's going to require some energy to overcome that repulsion, hence why it's an endothermic reaction. In the first one, oxygen is neutral, electrons negative, so they'll happily join together. In fact, this will even give out loads of energy, which is why it's exothermic. Okay, some final points. So we know that atomization is when you create one mole of gaseous atoms. However, bond dissociation energy is also when you create many gaseous atoms from one mole of gaseous molecules. Here's an example. Here, we have oxygen. 
So we have one mole of an O2 gaseous molecule. When you break the covalent bond or dissociate the bond that's holding the oxygens in O2, you get two oxygen atoms. So this is basically what bond dissociation energy is about. Let's say the value for this was 496. What would the value for this reaction be given that you know that bond dissociation energy of oxygen is 496? Well, it'll just be half of it. We'll do some more examples about bond dissociation in another video. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.